course website. So if you go here, there's this grade worksheet. I know that some of y'all are sort of freaking out about your grades. I just want to show you uh, how to use this. I'm freaking out is not the right, wrong word, or not the right word, but uh, is that accurate? Okay. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it. All right, so look, these are your grades. Well, these aren't your grades, but these are some somebody's grades, not a person. Uh, so these are your four quiz grades. Remember, I dropped the lowest of those. Uh, the final is worth 200, and the project is worth 200. All right, and then I also added in this 20 points. That was from the food drive, so that's just like an extra 20 points. And so you add up all those, and you divide by, uh, by 700, because there's a total of 700 points. And so you see if I, say for example, I have a 70, uh, a 50, uh, say a 60, and I don't know, a 40, all right? Uh, then that person who is sort of ranged from F to C on their, on their test with a 75% on the final exam will still come out with almost a B. So that's where that project comes in, that it, it adds a lot. And then also your final, which is going to be cumulative and counts for quite a bit, will also add a lot too. So there's still a lot of points to be had in the course. And so if you're freaking out right now, it's, I don't think it's really just sort of relax and take a big deep breath and just do as well as you can for the rest of the course with the final. All right. You have any questions about how I do the grades? No? All right. Well, uh, I've gotten a lot of projects from you uh, today and yesterday. So if you want to email those to me, that's great. If you brought paper copies, that's good too. You can hand those to me today. At the end of class, I'll get them. All right, or if you have some other type of multimedia thing, like a game or whatever, just hand Yeah, do you want me to take it out to your left right now? But if you have anything else, just hold on to it, okay? All right, so I'll pick those up at the end of class. I do need them by the end of today, so if you're still sort of making a few adjustments to it, that's fine. Just make sure that I get it by the end of the day. Is that clear? I'll try to get the grades up next week sometime. Yeah. Email is fine, yeah, especially if it's like a movie or something that you've made, or you can put it on YouTube. Some of y'all have done that. I've put it on YouTube, and that works really well. well yeah, I know. That was just me messing around. I, I, had, I was just sort of playing around with it, so... Don't, don't worry about submitting them on Moodle. Just email them to me directly. Is that clear? Or just hand them to me. Oh, that's your thing. Okay. All right. Any questions about the project? About grades? I'm going to hand back your fourth quiz today, and I'll post the video online this afternoon. So if you want to go ahead and start studying for that final, which is coming up, uh, does anybody know when the final is? The May the 14th. It'll be in this room. It's at 8 a.m. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Tuesday will just be review. So whatever we do today, that's going to be the end. And I think, I mean, we're probably, there's not a whole lot left. So, yeah, it's a bit of three. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, let's move on. I want to work some more examples. We left off last time working an example with a uh, with a convex lens. Oh, and also I want to give you the homework. Let me go ahead and give that to you now. I will post the solutions to the homework today or tomorrow. This is chapter 14 homework. All right, so chapter 14 homework. And again, I'll post the solutions. The questions are 4, 10, 13, and 16. And the problems are 2, 3, 8, 9, 11. Twelve, eighteen, and 22. A couple of these problems towards the end have multiple steps in them. Uh, on the quiz, or on the final, your, the problem would be much simpler, but it'll be any sort of one of those steps. Okay, I'll try to keep the problems on the quizzes as easy, as simple as possible, just as few steps as possible, uh, so that you don't 
you don't make a mistake in one step and then affect the end result. All right, so that's the chapter 14, and I'll have that up today or tomorrow afternoon on the YouTube site. But if you want to go and start looking at it, that's great. All right, so last time we did this example with a convex lens. Uh, I just want to go through quickly a concave lens. It works very similar way, uh, except with a concave lens, uh, it has one difference. So let's say that I have a concave lens with a focal length equal to uh, 10 centimeters. But for a concave lens, the focal length is negative. Remember, the concave lens looks like this. Is this a converging or diverging lens? The concave. Converging or diverging? That is, if light rays coming in parallel, do they converge together or do they diverge apart from one another? It's a diverging lens, right? And that's why our focal length here is negative, because this is a diverging lens, and the light rays that come in parallel are going to diverge. If I draw my light rays here, they diverge in this direction. All right, so I have a concave lens. Uh, an object is 10 centimeters from the lens. Where is the image? Very good test question. Something similar to that. I give you an object distance, a focal length, and ask you what is the image distance. So I go with my lens equation, 1 over f equals 1 over um, i plus 1 over o. And that's going to be uh, 1 over negative 10 equals 1 over i plus 1 over the object distance, which is 10 centimeters. And then I want to solve that for i. So I'm going to uh, take this and subtract both sides. So I get negative 1 over 10 minus 1 over 10 equals 1 over i. And uh, that's going to be negative. 2 over 10 equals 1 over i. That's negative 1 fifth equals 1 over i. And so i will equal negative 5 centimeters. My image distance is negative 5 centimeters. I'm going to turn the lights down just a little bit so you all can see better. Is that okay? All right. Just make sure there are a couple practice problems in the homework. Just make sure that you're able to work with this equation. If you have trouble with it, just come see me. I can help you. But you will have uh, one or two questions that are similar to this, where you just have an object distance, and you have to find the image distance. And then you can go further also and find the magnification, and the magnification for the object is just negative i over o. Our magnification is the image distance i over the object distance. So that's negative, negative 5 over 10 is positive 1 half. <clears throat> what kind of image has this lens produced? Does it produce a real or a virtual image? Have we gone over that yet? It produces a virtual image. That's right. And how do we know that it's virtual? Because the image distance is what, positive or negative? Negative. So anytime you have a negative i, that means it's a virtual image. It means it can't be projected on the screen. All right? So that's with a concave lens. All right, we're going to move on to mirrors, and we'll look at, uh, actually, now I want to show you something with the eye. We'll talk a little bit about the eye. The eye is kind of cool. The eye is basically a ball, and it has a lens here, 
uh, that is a convex lens. The lens is actually a little more complicated than this because it, it has a couple different pieces, but the real effect of this is just to create a convex lens or a converging lens. And light rays that come into the eye, if they come in parallel, if the light rays come in parallel, that is from a very distant source, then they're going to focus at the focal point of the eye. And so the focal point in this case is going to be at the back of the eyeball. Because where that focal point is, if the light rays are parallel, where those rays cross, that's where you're going to form your image. Right? So here I form an image at the back of the eyeball. And on the back of the eyeball is where you have the detectors that the eye has. Those are called the, uh, the rods and the cones. And they detect the colored and the, the black and white light when it comes into the eye. Now the really cool thing about the eye is that it has an adjustable lens. So there are these little muscles along the edge of the eye and they can squeeze that lens and make it fat in the middle which would decrease the focal length or they can stretch it out and make it thin in the middle which would increase the focal length. So it can have a very short focal length or it can have a longer focal length. So say for example I'm looking at something distant but then I want to look at something close up. The lens in my eye actually has to change shape in order to make that happen. So say for example, same eye, here's my lens, but now my object is over here. Okay? So I can draw some rays to figure out where the image is going to be. But in this case, my focal point for this lens is going to be here. So I'll have a ray there that goes parallel to the axis and through the focal point. Remember, we went over those rules for drawing these rays, and that's the first of the rules. Uh, the second one I'll draw is going to be through the focal point and then parallel to the axis. And so my rays come together there. So what has happened from the focal point from the first scenario, when it's really far away, the object, and the light rays are parallel, to where you have an object that's closer. What's happened to the focal point of the lens, of the eye? Has it increased, decreased, or stayed the same? When I'm looking at something really far away, the light focuses on the retina at the back of the eye. And then when I'm looking at something closer up, uh, the image still forms on the retina, but the focal point has had to shift. How has it shifted? Has the focal point increased, decreased, or stayed the same? It's decreased. It's gotten shorter. Uh, that means that the lens has gone from being long and thin, being short and fat, fat in the middle, and that gives it a shorter focal length. It's kind of cool that the eye can do that, right? And not only does it do that, but it lasts for like 80 years. It degrades a little bit over time, but can last for like 80 years. We don't really have detectors that can do that. That can last for such a long time. That can have a variable lens that can change focal length like that in real time, in very short amounts of time. And then also can detect very large amounts of light and also very small amounts of light. So it's, it's a pretty cool instrument, just sort of from an instrumental perspective uh, that we can't really match right now, technically, just because of technical problems. All right, um, I have a little video I want to share with you. This is from a, a Will Smith movie. I forget the name of the movie. The Wild Wild West. Have you all seen that movie? Yeah, so this is the scene when they're on the train. They're on the train, and they, they have this guy's head, and they're trying to figure out what his last, last image that he saw was.
Sorry, guys. I'm sorry guys, I'm having some internet issues. Let me try to get it one more time. I'm sorry, I don't think it's going to work. Was it loading? Okay. Seems to be loading. All right, we'll try it again. I really like this for a couple of different reasons. Uh, first of all, it's a little fantastical, right? Like, if you can get apart from this whole terminal retinas theory that you can image somebody's last image, which is obviously harsh, right? But it actually gets quite a bit right, but there's still a mistake. Now, first of all, what was it about the image that they saw when they shine the light back on, onto the screen? It was upside down. Now, we see that here. That uh, if I'm looking at an image that's upright, the image that it creates is actually upside down. So all the images that are that are projected onto the back of your eyeball are upside down. The image is upside down. And if you recall, that means that it has a negative magnification. The negative M means that the image has been inverted. All right, so the image is upside down. Um, but where they get it wrong is when they have to flip the guy's head over, because if you can take this image and make it go back through the lens, then the image that it's going to project onto the screen will be inverted, will be upright again. Because of this idea that if I have light rays that travel through a lens, then they'll travel back through in the same path, just in reverse. So there shouldn't be any need to turn his head upside down just because when you shine the light on the back of his eye, it's going to project this image, or this is going to become the object, and it's going to project it onto a screen. And so when you see it on the screen, it should be flipped back up again. All right. The other thing has to do with the, uh, the glasses, that the image appeared fuzzy to him. You know, let's say that I have an eyeball that's like this. It's just it wasn't really formed right, and it's really long, or I can have an eyeball that's really short. And in this case, if I have an eyeball that's too long, I'm going to have light rays that come in, and they're going to focus right here. And so when the light rays continue back to the retina, which is like the screen of the eyeball, it's going to appear fuzzy because that retina isn't at 
the actual focal point of the lens. So this is what causes you to have fuzzy vision, to be either nearsighted or farsighted. Let's see, I have some images here that show cross cuts of the eyeball. It's really just because of the shape of your eyeball, that your eyeball is either too short or your eyeball is too long. Uh, let's see. Here is uh, just a normal eye. In this case, the light rays that come in. retina, the eyeball. For this with
a negative image. The object distance is equal to the image. Flat mirrors always produce a virtual image. That means it can't be projected onto a screen and it has a negative image distance. Uh, the magnification of a mirror, of a flat mirror, is always equal to 1. So your image is always right, and it's always the same size as the object. Of a flat mirror. So let's say that I want to uh, look in a flat mirror and I want to see more of myself. What am I going to do? I want to see more of myself. What am I going to do looking in a flat mirror? You're going to do what? Back up. Okay, I want you all to try something because that's not true really. Like if you back up from a flat mirror, it doesn't affect how much you see of yourself. So here I have a flat mirror. I'm going to pass it around. I want you to look at it and I don't know, look at your face or whatever. And so I see from about my eyebrow down to my lip in this flat mirror, and then pull it up close, and then pull it out far away, and you'll see that you still see the same section of face. And you can try this at home, too, with your bathroom mirror. Uh, if you back up, you don't see more of yourself at all. Probably the reason you think that, because everybody thinks that, I used to think it too, is because uh, most of our bathrooms where we have mirrors most of the time, there's a vanity in front of the mirror, and so the vanity actually blocks light coming from your feet. And so if you back up, it is true that you'll see your feet in your bathroom, uh, but not because of the mirror. It's not because you're further back. It's just because you're moving away from the vanity, and, uh, and it's not blocking the light from your feet. So try this out. Just hold it up close and look at a section of your face, and then notice when you pull it away that that section remains the same. So we would call that the, uh, the field of view, the field of view. I'll abbreviate FOV, is always the same for a flat mirror. That is regardless of your object distance. It's a good party trick too. So you can just like if you carry a mirror in your pocket or whatever. Like if you're at a party, you can just ask somebody that question. And of course, everybody thinks that that if you move further back from a mirror, you see more of yourself. But it's just completely not true. So you can, I don't know, you can bet them five bucks or whatever, and then pull out your mirror. News that matters. That's what we're all about here. All right. Um, there are two other types of mirrors: the concave mirror and a convex mirror. You've probably encountered both of these. In fact, I'm gonna I'm not, hold on. I'll pass one around. It's best. So a concave mirror is like a makeup mirror. like a makeup mirror. It looks like this. Uh, if I have light rays that come in to the mirror, what's going to happen to those light rays? Are they going to diverge or converge? Are they going to come together or are they going to go apart? They're going to come together, right? You can look at the, uh, the geometry of it. Because our law of reflection still has to remain true. That is, the incident angle has to equal the reflected angle. If I draw a normal line here, that angle has to equal the reflected angle. And so my light rays are going to come together. For that reason, a concave mirror is also called a converging mirror. Do you think that it's going to have a positive or negative focal length? 
thinking back to lenses. Positive or negative? Yeah. It's opposite of the lenses, that's right. So the, uh, well, the names are opposite. That's what you're asking? For, right. I know. Right. You're right. But the names are switched here. So for a concave mirror, that's like a convex lens, and that they're both converging. Okay. It doesn't matter too much uh, because there are really the only difference is the sign of the focal length, that the concave mirror has a positive focal length because it's converging. And any time you encounter that in a problem, I'll tell you what the sign of the focal length is. Okay? What's that? It is positive, yeah, because it's a converging mirror. So this has a positive focal length. Just like the convex lens, it has a positive focal length. The positive focal length. Uh, you can get a variety of images from a concave mirror. I'm going to pass it around. Have a concave mirror. We're not going to do ray diagrams for the mirrors, but uh, I just want you to see them. And I want you to be able to identify the types of images that you can get. Let's go ahead and write it down, actually. The types of images. This is a concave mirror. This is the focal point. If your the object is out here, then the image is going to be upside down. It's going to be upside down. Uh, inverted, or that's inverted, upside down, and it'll be a real image. All right, so if I put a screen right here, I could project it onto a screen. It's an upside down real image. That's if the object is outside the focal point. And I'm going to pass one around, and you'll be able to see this. The other scenario is that I can have an object inside the focal point. So if my object is right here, that's my object. And my image is going to be back here. Is that a real or virtual image? Can I project that image onto a screen? Here I have this uh, object on this side, and then the image is behind the mirror. Can I project that onto a screen? You think? No, I can't, because I can't put a screen back there. This is like that virtual poltergeist world. You all seen that movie? Poltergeist? Walk to the light. You seen it? No, I think it was around the 80s. Yeah. That old lady, yeah. Walk to the light. It's a revenant. That's wacky. All right, so you can't put a screen there because it's, like I said, it's in poltergeist world. Uh, so that's a virtual image. It's upright and it's bigger. Virtual, upright. It's bigger. This is like a makeup mirror, right? This is the use that you have for a makeup mirror to make yourself look real big with all your pores and dirt, all that stuff. So this is a concave mirror. Can y'all see yourselves in it? Anybody see yourselves? You see? How do you look? You're upside down, right? So I'm going to pass it around. If you hold it up real close to your face, just like a couple of inches. You'll be able to see your face in all its glory, all right? Real big. Like you won't, you'll just be able to see, like, your nose. And then if you hold it out like this, you'll see yourself upside down, all right? So you need to know what types of images these are. If I hold it up close, that's a bigger magnified virtual image. And if I hold it out like this, that is an uh, inverted real image. Now clear on those two types of images? Take a good close look at it. This is a concave mirror. The other type of mirror, you probably see more, called a convex mirror. I have a convex here. It's not very good, but I'm going to pass it around anyway. Uh, 
this is like a cut on one side is convex and one side is concave. I'll pass it around. The concave isn't very good, but you can just get a feel for the convex mirror. The convex mirror is mirrored on the opposite side. There's a number of different uses. The sort of everyday life. The convex mirror. It looks like this, where my object is over here. This only has one type of image that it produces. The only way you see these types of mirrors, the convex mirrors. Images appear bigger or smaller than they actually are. The images, they appear smaller. The people appear smaller. You can see more of them. It has a bigger field of view than, say, a, a flat mirror. Uh, so the convex mirror, everything looks smaller so that you can see more people you can see more. Right, so the convex mirror produces an image that's smaller. That image is upright. You don't really want a security mirror that produces an inverted image. And that image is back here. Is it real or virtual? It's a virtual image because it's back there in virtual land. A virtual image, it's upright, and it is uh, smaller. I said the uses of these are for security mirrors. You see it somewhere else, very commonly. Where else do you see a convex mirror? Where? On a car, you're right. So on not your left, not your driver's side, but on the passenger side mirror is a convex mirror. Uh, that's why it says that things may be closer than they appear, right? Because they look small and smaller than they actually are, so that means they look farther away than they actually are. Just, usually just on the passenger side. Maybe some have it on the driver's side. Do you? I think it's just on the passenger side. All right. Uh, that's not quite as convex. The focal length is a lot bigger than something like you might have in a security mirror. Oh, thank you. Uh, but it's still a convex mirror nonetheless. So you can use these for security mirrors. You can also use these um, on a side view mirror on the passenger side. So take a look at them. They're a little more subtle than the security mirror, but they just allow, it, allow you to see a larger field of view. Uh, so side mirror in a car. Uh, the focal length for these are negative. Oh, so this is a diverging mirror. And so if light rays come in, they diverge. They go apart from one another. All right, and so it has a negative focal length. You don't need to memorize that it has a negative focal length. I like said if you ever encounter it in a in a problem, I'll tell you the sign of the focal point. Uh, but you do need to know that this is a diverging mirror. And if you look at the shape of the mirror, you can tell because uh, these angles have to be equal. And the only way for those angles to be equal are for the light ray to go up and to diverge from the other rays. All right. Um, how's that, uh, con that big concave mirror? Where is it? Are you all done? Is that everybody has seen it? I want to show you one other thing that's kind of cool. This is really just sort of a trick. Oh, did y'all see it yet? Y'all see the concave mirror? OK, well, y'all go ahead and pass it around. I'll get it when it comes back. All right. 
So let's work through a problem with one of these. This is just like it works for lenses. So um, it just uses what we call the mirror equation, but it looks exactly the same as the lens equation. So let's say a concave mirror has a focal length. of plus 10 centimeters, an object is 20 centimeters from the lens or from the mirror. I want to know what is the image distance equal to and what is the magnification. All right, so this is a concave mirror. There's my focal point, and I have an object right there. First of all, is that image going to be upright or inverted? Just from sort of your experience, if I, if I hold that concave mirror far away, is it going to be upright or inverted? Upright or inverted? Up or down? It's going to be inverted. That's, that's that mirror we just passed around. If I hold it out, then I look upside down. So I know that my object, this is my object, my image is going to look something like that. My image will look something like that. Uh, so this is my image. I can find that image. It's 1 over F equals 1 over I plus 1 over O. That's 1 over 10 plus 1 over I plus 1 over 20. I subtract 1 over 20 from both sides. That gives me, you can do this in your calculator, you can do the fractions. This gives us uh, 2 over 20 minus 1 over 20 is 1 over 20 equals 1 over I. And so I is equal to 20 centimeters. All right, that tells me because it's positive, this is a real image, so positive I means it's a real image. And then I can also find the magnification. It's negative I over O. That's going to be negative 20 over the object distance, which is given in the problem, over 20. So it's negative 1. The negative of the magnification means that your image is inverted. And because the magnification is equal to 1, that means that you're going to be the same size as the object. Right? Magnification is negative 1. That means that it's, in, it's negative, it's inverted, and because it's 1, it's the same size as the object. It's exactly the same as we did with the lenses. It's just using mirrors instead. Just be careful with your focal length. Make sure that you get the sign. I'll give you the sign in the problem, but make sure that you carry it properly. The big thing is just working with the fractions. And if you have trouble with that, please come see me. I can help you with it. Uh, but working through the homework will help. You can practice that. Oh, thank you. I'm going to show you all one more thing. You ladies are done. No, you go ahead. Look at it. Just here. <laughs> you see yourself upside down? Okay. I, I have two mirrors, and if I, I can use a system of two mirrors. We're not going to do this where we have more than one lens or mirror, but you can do that and create different types of images. Uh, now, if I put something that's really close, that's going to produce a virtual image, but then I can take another mirror and place it nearby. And it'll take that virtual image and make it into a real image. So this is uh, two concave mirrors. I'm going to pass this around. There's a little pig inside of it. And if you look at it sort of like this, you'll see the pig right there. And it's sort of like a little 3D hologram. Deal. OK. I think that might be it. Like, it was, let me check my notes. A 
I did have one other topic, but I think we'll just call that it. We were going to do fiber optics. You want to do fiber optics? No, it's okay. All right, we'll just stop there. But I'm going to, don't leave. I, I have your quizzes. Y'all go ahead and pass around that mirror. And I have your quizzes to return. Um, and then you'll need to, those of you who brought projects to me, some of you have already emailed them to me, but those of you that have brought projects to me uh, can hand them back now. All right, folks, I have a few scantrons here, so let me just run through these. Okay, I'm going to call your name. Come up quickly. Ryan Barbier, Nikki Boudreau, LaDondra. Anybody not get their scantron? Rachel? Okay, well, come on up if you didn't get it. Just come up. There was one error, and I didn't count it. If you got number, guys, what was the one I said that if you got wrong? Number five. If you got it wrong, I didn't count it. Number five. Or, Nikki, I'm sorry. Boudreaux. Yeah. You're wrong. Miller? Yes. Don't leave yet. I still have your other stuff. Yes, in just a moment. Guys, I also have a little stack of old quizzes that just people haven't picked up. So if you haven't got those quizzes, then just please see me after class, after I hand back these. I also have some proposals and what have you, project progress reports. back the quizzes so don't, don't ask to look at anybody's quizzes. Okay. Yeah, I have a pencil. You don't need a scan truck. Okay. So just hang out here for a few minutes. All right. Sam? 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 All right, guys. I'm going to hand back. I'm going to put your quizzes right up here on the on the uh, stage, and then after that, just make sure that I get whatever you brought for me today, and then you can go. Is that clear? On Tuesday, we'll just have review for the final. Uh, I don't intend to have a review session, so I'm going to treat that as the review session. So I'll just be here. I'll go over briefly for about 10 minutes or so what to expect for the final. I'll review all the stuff that we've been the past stuff, the light, and what was the previous chapter that we did before? Magnetism. I'll go over that and just sort of give you a five-minute review. Uh, there'll be no new material. We'll just uh, cover the exam, what's going to be on the exam. I'd recommend that you come. I think it might be useful for you. But it's, if you don't feel like you need review, that's fine, too. All right. Huh? That'll be on Tuesday. And then our uh, final, 14th at 8 a.m. All right? Uh, so I'm going to... And back your quizzes up here. Just come grab them. Lindsay, Faith, Kyle, Gidry, Laura Russell, Casey Summerfield, Ruth, Rachel, Amico, Danielle, Ryan Adams, Hillary Lopez, Benet, Jen, Weidrick, Shelley, Amy, uh, 
Cain, Dave, Dene, Sade, Brittany, LaBeouf, Joel Piccolo, Chase, Demi, Sarah, Andrea, thank you. Lucas, Ryan Barbier, Rianne, Jasmine, Celeste, Joel Fussell, Caleb Adams, Courtney Denou, Karen Hamilton, Royal, Angela, Kelsey, Alyssa, LaDondra, Larry, Jordan, Laura Miller, Tyler, Trahan, Giera, Deshaun, Nikki Boudreau, Adriana, David, Candace Boudreau, Sierra, oh, thank you, thank you. That's all. all right, guys, get whatever you have to me. Make sure it gets in my hand. Thank you, Sierra. Okay, hold on just a second. Okay, these are things that you've handed in down here. What's on the DVD? Have you sent it to me already? Yeah, I'll take it. Do you think, it, are you able to put it on YouTube? It is on, uh, well, there is a YouTube link. Okay. I don't know, I haven't tested the YouTube link because it's like last night I went to I'll just take both, yeah. You can it. Okay. Okay. All right. Nay, thank you. Here's our, I emailed you everything else. Right, I got it. It looked really good. I saw your video. Okay. I know it's hard going in front of a class. No, it was good. I thought it was good. <laughs> I know it's very hard to do, but y'all did a great job, I Thank thought. Thank you very much. Okay.